Hi, this is Randy and Ella, and uh, we're doing a YouTube video for our friends and family who've been kind of following us along in our rocket journey. And uh, I thought it would be a good time to make this video and maybe answer some questions that we are asked pretty frequently. And people kind of want to know how we progress up to the bigger rockets. And I've talked about license and certifications and why you have to do that and also give everyone kind of an idea of the size the rockets have become over the, the last uh, few months. So well, if you'll come over here, she's a videographer, and we'll start where we began. You can stand over here, okay? So where we began was an Estes kit that uh, Ella actually got uh, about two years ago for Christmas. And back in May, we're like, hey, it's springtime, why don't we get outside and do something fun? So after having them on, in the closet for about two years, we broke them out and uh, we went up to a local high school after getting permission from one of the fire departments that uh, we could launch it up there. So it was a pretty exciting day. Some of you saw the video. Uh, so this is a basic kit uh, from Estes, comes pre-assembled. It starts off with uh, an A-size engine. Uh, which you can get at Michael's or any hobby store. Uh, a puts this rocket up to about 400 feet. It also will take a, a B engine, which is the same size, same diameter. The engines are sized based on diameter. Uh, so this is an 18 millimeter diameter size. So B, the higher the letter, the more propulsion. So the B takes this rocket eh, roughly about six hundred feet roughly and then it can go up to a C engine and C will take it around 800 to a thousand feet depending on the conditions so pretty neat little rocket you just screw off the little bottom uh, you put the the uh, engine in you put the little cap back on you screw it on and, and there you go. In fact, our cousin Jack had one of these and looked like he had a good time. Uh, basically, the rocket, these rocket engines are just hard uh, cardboard. And you can see they've got the letter, uh, the, the size, and what the three is is what's called a delay charge. So this is black powder. This is the nozzle. So before this one burned, there was an injection cap, basically just a cap that pops like a little bitty firecracker. So you put an igniter up in there. Uh, the igniter lights the cap so all the fuel burns over a certain period of time when it gets burns out to the top it lights the cap. The cap makes a little pop, pop noise so it pressurizes the tube. When that happens it blows the nose comb off. Nose comb comes out and you have a parachute that comes out and the rocket comes down pretty much, you can get the whole up like that. What these pieces are, we've upgraded ours because what comes out of STs doesn't last very long. There's a rubber band here. My advice is get rid of that as soon as possible. This is a Kevlar thread, which is pretty much fire resistant. This is a Nomex cloth material, also fire retardant. So we fold our parachute like a burrito in this stuff, push it down in there, put all the cords so it keeps the parachute from getting burned from the charge charge pops, comes out, comes down, and if you're lucky it comes down in the field that you sent it out. So that's the level that we were at when we started back in May and so in May as a hobby we were going with these letters so this is your standard engines A, B, C as I've shown you here the thrust range which is in Newtons A goes from about 1 to 3 you can see each letter is getting roughly twice as much so B is 4 to 6 Newtons total thrust C is 6 to 10 so we built some later rockets that got us up to the D and E again all these engines are, you can buy pretty much at any store, local store D takes you up 10 to 16 E goes from 16 to 30. So the girls and I played around with a lot of rockets in the May June time frame, all up to E. This is a rocket that I actually custom made for Ella. Um, we had a kit that was made out of Star Trek, but 
looks cool but it wasn't built that durable and it would only run on a C engine it was very underpowered sometimes the injection charge wasn't strong enough to get the shoot out so I built her another one this is all reinforced cardboard tubing put the real high-end metal uh, engine ring on it uh, a lot of heavy epoxy in here well what happened is this thing it's all a, a science of weight and altitude you know the more the rocket weighs the more power you got to put into it so this rocket went from being a C rocket all the way up to E and E will put this rocket up between a thousand to twelve hundred feet so so Ella now is shooting E engines uh, again this is one that hasn't burned you can see there's the actual cap and this is the nozzle so this would go up in there uh, like this you take this out and you push them in there and you put the cap back on so you can see Ella has gone um, from like little stuff like that to bigger stuff makes a lot more noise a lot more smoke uh, you kind of feel the heavier thrust from this rocket so this is putting her up into the you know the 16 to 30 Newton range again still classified as a hobby so we wanted to take it one step further so a lot of you seen the videos of the initiator so the initiator got us to an F size engine so F is running above 30 and eventually we went to what's called reloads now you can only go up to an F G and what's called a single use now if you burn it one time you throw it away as the engines get more powerful cardboard and plastic cannot hold the pressure that's built up by the engine and the whole idea is you you've got a, a, a material that's burning it's a controlled burn it has an oxidizer it's building pressure and you basically want all the pressure to come out the nozzle so the thrust of that uh, pressure coming out the nozzle if the if the thrust is greater than the weight of the rocket then the rocket's going to go up and that's how it works so as you get into G you have to start getting into reloadables now this is a case we actually load the uh, rocket fuel into this we have an injection charge we have a nozzle and it actually goes into the bottom of the rocket so this rocket got us uh, all the way up to the limits of what's called model rocketry and what that is is model rockets per the FAA and other regulatory agencies is any rocket that weighs up to but no more than 15 grams the maximum thrust that the engine can have is up to 160 newtons but the average thrust the amount of thrust that's being uh, sent out of the engine over the duration of the burn cannot exceed 80 newtons per second and that's pretty much putting you in a motor range upwards of G so the initiator right out of the kit got us into the F to G range so we were right under the uh, the model rocket limit um, I later modified this rocket to go uh, up to three grains in a reload and uh, some of you were watching maybe I got a little overconfident and the idea is you want roughly five times the amount of uh, five times the amount of thrust uh, than compared to the weight of the engine so the the rocket engine should be able to lift five times the weight of the rocket by code you can go down to three well I allowed it to go down to three and um, my calcs weren't right and you actually just the ejection delay and it went off too late so the rocket was already coming down pretty fast and when it did the shock cord ripped right through the side of the rocket that's what you call a zipper so basically the rocket's going down the nose comes out and the cord yanks and it cuts right into the rocket so I've since cut this off the rocket and I'm gonna put in a new tube and we'll get that one flying again so when that happened I liked that uh, I liked that style rocket a lot so I took the kit 
and made a fiberglass version. So we took the plans of that rocket and this is hard. You could actually stand on it. It's fiberglass tubing, fiberglass inside. And I made this where this could take upwards of uh, four grains. So there's actually an engine in this. I'll take it out. I'll pause it. Okay, so I'm going to take the engine out. This one we shot yesterday was a four grain, four grain engine. This is actually the, the engine that we fired. I'll take it out. So you take the, the retention cap off the bottom, you pull it out. So that's the actual engine here. So basically, you've got the nozzle that comes with it. You would have four grains in here, which are all gone now because it burned. And then the top, you have the ejection delay. If I can get it out. There we go. This had powder in it. You can see where it burned. So this burns, but it doesn't create any thrust. So the idea is when the uh, fuel is burning, this lights at the same time, but it burns very slowly. And we actually know how long it takes to burn this. Once this burns and reaches the cap, it explodes and injects the uh, parachute. So with the bigger uh, rockets, we have to know the weight of the rocket and we put it into a flight simulator. You can look over here. So we model all the rockets. We know all the materials, the weight, uh, the weight to thrust ratio, and this program simulates it and tells me the altitude, the maximum speed, acceleration, and what you want is when a rocket goes up, it goes up in an arc and of course it reaches a certain speed, it starts decelerating when it gets to the top of the arc, it's almost, it's a, it reaches zero miles per hour and then it starts its descent going down. So what we do is the program tells me what that delay, that time is. From the time the rocket leaves the pad, where does it reach its maximum altitude? That's where we want the parachute to come out. So I know by taking this little device here, you can see it's got a drill bit inside. See that? And this is the amount of seconds that we take off. So if this came with originally 14 second burn time, and say I wanted the burn time actually at 7 seconds, I want to take out 7 seconds worth of fuel. Well, not fuel, but delay charge. So I put this in here and rotate it, and it actually will drill out a plug in the center. And the idea, if I've done everything right, the injection will actually happen right at or close to when the rocket is at a slow speed, pops out at the top and floats down. The one that zippered, our calculations were off and uh, it was already coming down almost like 50 miles per hour and then when the shock core came out it, it tore, the, uh, tore the side of the rocket. So there is a lot of calculations that we go through to make uh, to make a good flight so that that adds a certain complication when you get into the to the bigger rockets these from the stores all that's already calculated for you so the manufacturer tells you the rocket to put in they know what the delay should be so you don't have to think about it when you get into reloads like what we're in now you have to calculate but you also can make more of a perfect flight because you're going to fine tune it to where it ejects right at the apogee so we started running reloads, our first reloads in probably the June to July time frame. Um, so the initiator, and that's why we built a fiberglass version. I really like this rocket. This rocket is mid-size. It can shoot uh, model rocket type engines, but we can also go above the limits of what is considered a model rocket because recently we got our level one license so we built this rocket here which is a bigger rocket this rocket can go all the way up to H size engines 
and we use this rocket to get our level certification. So to get a level one, you then shoot something that's higher than the requirements. So you shoot something that's stronger than 160 newtons. You got to build a rocket that can withstand that amount of thrust. You have witnesses. They witness you uh, shooting the rocket. It has to go up. It should have a good shoot deployment and it comes down and if it's not damaged you get your level one. So we received that recently. So now we can shoot all the way up to 640 newtons. So to give you a comparison, we started in our hobby days going up to roughly about 30 and now we're going up to 640. So rockets are getting bigger, they're getting heavier, taking more thrust to achieve the same kind of altitudes. So we are licensed through an organization it's called NAR, N-A-R, and that's the National Association of Rocketry. Uh, by members, we, we are fully insured when we launch the rockets. Uh, we carry upwards, I think, of uh, about $200,000 worth of insurance. And you can see here we have a level one certification. So you cannot buy these bigger engines just in any store. They are through certified retailers and the retailers require ID and your certification card before they will sell the engine to you. So it's very controlled. You have to work under the guidelines of the FAA and the NAR. So we are now a level one um, uh, rocket member. So that brought us to the G-Force. So the G-Force, a lot of you have been watching us launch it. We've recently painted it. Uh, after we have a few successful flights, we paint them. And the G-Force, as well as the initiator, is a 29 millimeter diameter engine. So the initiator uses a three grain. We modified it to go to a four grain. The G-Force takes a six grain. If you want to show this, I actually shot this yesterday. So this is a 29 six grain casing. So you can see here how much more fuel it is. That will put this rocket upwards of about 2,000 feet. So we have video on that. The actual engine in this one, if you take it out, it's just basically the same diameter, but a lot more. Let me get my pliers. Just a longer tube, a lot more. Oops, struggling here. There we go. So that shot this rocket at about 2,000 feet. Uh, yesterday. So we got a lot of great footage on the onboard camera. So we'll be showing you that. Um, so where do we go from here? We are now working on our level two. And level two will allow us to go upwards of 5,120 newtons. So this is a level two rocket here. We're building this right now, it's in cardboard form. Um, this rocket really couldn't go upwards of 5,000 feet, 500 miles per hour made of uh, cardboard. But I since learned how to do fiberglass. So we're gonna encase this entire rocket in fiberglass and this will allow us to go upwards of 10,000 feet and close to 900 miles an hour. So if you know, the sound barrier is broken at 767 miles per hour roughly. This rocket will exceed the sound barrier Mach 1. It basically will get up at its maximum to about 900 miles an hour in two seconds. Uh, it'll reach upwards of uh, roughly about 10,000 feet. So, to give you an idea, this is a 54 millimeter rocket. This is the engine casing. 
that comes with this. So this is the engine tube. It can hold up to six grains. This is the actual engine casing. This is a two grain engine casing. And this is going to hold the rocket engine for our left. So this is a two grain 54 millimeter casing. We actually received this yesterday. This is what we're going to use to shoot this for our level two certification. And that's going to require again demonstrate that we can shoot this rocket um, and receive it back in one piece. <clears throat> There's a little more stringent requirements. It requires a uh, test, so there's a written test, and then we have to uh, to demonstrate that it can uh, come down correctly. Um, two things I want to show. Um, we do the simulation on the computer, but now we have an onboard altimeter, and we put the altimeter in the rocket, and the altimeter measures outside uh, pressure. And so as the pressure decreases, the altimeter knows its altitude. When you look here, if I turn it on, it's going to come on and show the last flight. I don't know if you can see this. But the last flight we did with the G-Force yesterday reached four, uh, just under 1,500 feet. It went 128 miles per hour maximum. Uh, it's, uh, basically, the thrust duration was 0.75 seconds. It experienced 18.5 G's total acceleration with an average of 7.8 G force. And it basically had reached its apogee at 8.8 .8 seconds. And the injection charge happened at 1.7 seconds from apogee. So you get all this data and it allows us to compare the computer program and make sure the rocket is responding the way we thought. Another thing people have asked us is how do you take the, the videos on the rocket? Well this is a little video camera. We basically attach it to the side of the rocket with Velcro and a tie wrap and it videotapes the onboard flights. So this rocket has to have dual what we call dual deployment. Dual deployment means that if you're going 9,000 feet, if we popped a parachute at 9,000 feet, this thing would drift probably five miles. So the field size, even though we shoot big fields, wouldn't reach it. So dual deployment, what it does is the first, when it reaches its apogee, it comes apart here. There's an altimeter in here that knows when it's reached its maximum height. It will blow a discharge here and we deploy a very small parachute. This parachute really just slows it down, but the rocket is pretty much falling straight down. Very high rate of speed, but a controlled speed. And it will go from roughly 9,000 feet to just about 500 feet off the ground. And when it does, then the charge will kick out this portion of the rocket at the top. And then this big parachute will come out, this one here. And that will actually stop at 500 feet, drift it down to the ground at roughly about 15 miles per hour. So this is what we call an altimeter bay. It has an altimeter in there, has batteries. The altimeter knows when it reaches the apogee, the maximum flight. You have black powder charges here. The, uh, the electronics ignite the black powder. Black powder pressurizes this side of the rocket, splits it in half, and the drogue chute comes out. The altimeter knows as it's falling, when it reaches 500 feet above the ground, it will discharge this side and blow off this side of the rocket and injects the big parachute. And if everything works out right, it reaches the ground without any damage. And we'll stop. So once we've got our level two, we can actually launch this one with a smaller engine, a 38 millimeter instead of a 54. We can test out all the electronics, dual deployment, but we can stay within our level one size engines. It won't go very high, but we can demonstrate the workings. Um, we then can take this up to level two, start testing our skills at higher altitude flights. Um, this one here is really what I consider my, my target for going up 
So the biggest rocket, this is all fiberglass. This is a very strong rocket. Um, so I don't have to add any fiberglass to it. These are fiberglass tubes. Um, this will take a 54 millimeter as well engine casing like this. Um, this is just basically a real high powered, high accelerating rocket easily. Uh, we're going to modify it to go up to six grains. This rocket here will easily probably go above 10,000 feet. Uh, we can probably push it as hard as we want to, uh, maybe up to 15,000 feet, uh, well above Mach 1. Uh, this will be a real workhorse uh, and a high altitude rocket. So, in summary, this is all model rocketry. We're now licensed for the FAA at level 1 to shoot what is considered a real rocket. These two are level 1 real rockets. These will be our level 2 rockets that we will shoot. Hopefully we'll shoot this one maybe this fall and this one next year. Um, so, yeah, a lot of progress. The fact that since May we went from this kind of stuff to this kind of stuff and probably before year end we will be in this kind of stuff. So stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for following us and uh, we look forward to our level 2 certification this year hopefully. Thanks.